Good morning, traders. Today is Wednesday, April 10th. My name is Charles, and this is the Pirate Traders live stream. We are focused on the ES, the NQ, and how they move through the two way auction process. Well, first things first, WTF happened in the overnight. Well, obviously, it was the CPI news. All right, so yesterday, the market liquidated during the day completely retraced that liquidation and closed pretty close to where it opened. It then spent the entire overnight just bouncing between yesterday's opening price and yesterday's closing price. That was a sign of uncertainty. Overnight traders unwilling to take trades. Um, then, of course, the CPI came out. The market moved up for about a second and a half and then in less than a minute. It drops 60 points and just in a breathtaking liquidation break, move to the downside. So now we are opening this morning with what we call a gap down. A gap down is bearish to see. However, the first order of business for the market will be to try to fill the gap, to try to get up to 5208. We measure the gaps based on the previous day's high or low, not the closing price, okay? So they don't have to get all the way back up to 52.60 in order to fill the gap. They just have to get to 52.08. If they get to 52.08 and they get resistance there and they can't get back up into yesterday's range, that would be bearish to see. Increasing the odds, the market is going to head lower. If the market can't get to yesterday's low, if they try to fill that gap and they get smacked down beforehand, that is also very bearish for continuation lower. That is what we call a gap and go. Now in you know the recent, I would say last six months or so, the most common thing to happen when the market makes a gap is that it just chops for a while. And basically what a gap and chop means is that the market just keeps passing through the opening price again and again and again. So we want to be bearish, bigger picture, right? We want to be bearish understanding that the gap down is a sign the market wants to go down, but we have to accept that we may spend some time going sideways first, okay? At this point, I will be using the opening price as the most important level to monitor. That's at 51.99, you could call it 5,200. Um, as long as the market is below that opening price, it is likely to get a gap and go. It is likely to head lower today. Every time it passes through that opening price, it increases the odds they're gonna get the gap fill. But in both scenarios, I assume we will get selling at 5208 and continue lower. It would only be if we got new buying inside yesterday's range that I would change my bias to become more bullish intraday. Okay? The gap down is telling us we want to be bearish intraday. We want to assume that the sellers have taken control. This massive move with the CPI also changes things on a longer time frame. Okay, on a daily time frame, it has taken us back down to the lower end of a balance area that we've now been in throughout this week. That tells us we are either going to turn around and head right back up or continuation lower. Okay, it also breaks any potential support the market had on a weekly time frame, which again is very bearish to see because it increases the odds if the market can't turn around. In the next day or two and get back up, we are likely going to get a larger pullback on the weekly time frame. That is weeks of going down. Okay. So things are bearish as long as we are below yesterday's low and they only change if we can get back inside yesterday's range, get back above 5208 and start to spend some time and bring in some volume. Let's see what happens. It is now once again attempting to fill the gap.
Let's jump over and take a look at what's happening with the NQ. All right, so obviously exact same reaction to the CPI news, caused a massive sell-off, back down to a balance area low. However, the NQ has filled the gap. So now the question becomes, Yesterday's low was around 18,160. Can they stay above there? Can they bring in volume? Can they spend time? If they can, it is less bearish and it increases the odds they're going to start to retrace some of this liquidation from CPI. However, as is happening as we speak, the more time and the more volume that they spend below yesterday's range, the more likely you're going to get continuation lower. So they're dancing right on that gap fill as we speak. We shall soon know. Is it a gap fill or a gap and go? Good morning to Will, Sebastian, Cool Beans, R, babies, Ships, Ola, Nap is here. Cool Beans says, yesterday I made a test live stream and failed. <laughs> Good morning to Kaz. He says, the internet didn't work here. Ah, oh, bummer. Yeah, you have to have pretty good internet to upload at uh, full speed. David G in the house. Mac Vins is here. Tony M says, happy CPI day. It's CPI day. Yeah. RK. Good morning to you. Tim is here. Jay says, paradise action, baby. Yeah, I mean, today is either going to be one of two things. And I know this seems like I'm saying every possibility, but it's either going to be really, really boring. And we're just going to chop around the opening price all freaking day. Or we're going to make a move. And that move will either be a gap and go. In which case, I would say at the very least, we're looking to test 5181, perhaps even 5168. Or we get the gap fill that finds support inside yesterday's range and we head back up for yesterday's VOP, um, VPOC at 52.34. So either way, there's some opportunities here today. But we got to let them chop around. We got to figure out which way this gap is going to break first. Because they love a gap and chop. They love to spend a few hours getting you long and getting you short and stopping you out and reversing again. Oh, so emotional. Good morning to Debbie B. Pavel in the house. 18 Siri. Good morning to you. Grizzly Bull is here. John H. Hi, y'all. 200 dogs. Ken. Grizzly Bull says, let's get to 100 likes for the captain. You know, I think that's a great idea. We got 117 people hanging out. Only 27 thumbs up. Can we break 100? 
Can we do it, chat? Ooh, we're almost halfway there. We got 44. I promise pushing the like button won't cost you a thing. Good morning to Philip. Nanny. Scalp Demon. Jads. Holden. Holden says, if I had a real pirate ship, what would I call it? Um, what would be a good name for a pirate ship? I don't know. Let me think about it. Let me be clever with it. I got to focus on the market right now. Philip says, Fed notes this afternoon. Well, that's fine. That's all well and good. But first, we got to deal with the gap. Can they fill it? And do we get selling at 5208? Rito says, are you saying the market is going up or down? That is exactly what I'm saying. But I'm not just saying the market is going to go up or down. I'm telling you what to look for to know which direction. So now we're back above the opening price. What are you looking for? A gap fill. If they can do it, great. If not, you should be bearish, right? If they come back down through that opening price, you should be getting bearish. And if they come back up again, you're looking for a gap fill. And if they get it, great. If not, and they come back through the opening price, you should be bearish again. You should let it chop and just give you understanding of what's happening. Now, if the market gets to yesterday's low, if it gets to 5208, you should assume there'll be sellers waiting there. You should assume some of the people that have been buying this morning, as a matter of fact, I'd say a lot of them that have been buying this morning, they are just looking to get that gap fill. So they'll be taking profits in here, right? You should also assume there are sellers that didn't want to short the low. They'll be waiting to go short there at yesterday's low. So you should expect some resistance at 5208. That resistance is new sellers and buyers taking profits. So what happens there gives you the idea. Are we heading back up into yesterday's range for the VPOC from yesterday? Or are we going to get selling to head down to 5181? So yes, it could go up or down, but we know what to look for in order to give ourselves an edge. Still couldn't fill the gap. Looks like volume on the... Uh, Book map, liquidity, sorry, on the book map got a little thin here. So there must have been some news at 945. We'll wait for that liquidity to step back in. Uh, Nap says, do you think the single prints provide additional context to the gap? Um, if you're talking about the single prints from the overnight, no, I do not. That was CPI. That was just, you know, the order books were thin because the, the stocks weren't trading, right? A lot of the volume on the ES on any given day is the arbitrage between those underlying shares. So when those arbitrage bots aren't turned on because the underlying shares aren't moving, well, then there's, there's much less liquidity. And so it's very easy to push the price around. So I wouldn't think about the single prints from the overnight the same way I would think about single prints for the regular trading hours. However, if you were talking about the um, selling tail that we had at the lows from yesterday, that the base of that could become resistance if... Yesterday's low does not, but that's nothing to worry about right now. Right now we have a gap and go, which is bearish to see.
I would say at this point, they are much more likely to turn the halfback around uh, 51.99 into resistance. That came so close to filling the gap. Okay. A lot of the buyers who were looking for that gap fill will now be getting squeezed. So if they can hold resistance at, we'll just call it 5,200, nice round number. If they can hold resistance at 5,200, that would be bearish for continuation lower. If they pass back through it, more gap and chop. But I would say the probability of it holding now is slightly higher since we tried to fill the gap and failed. Danny, good morning to you. Malcolm in the house. Malcolm says the golden hind. I'm not even sure I understand what that is. It's a terrible name for a ship if I don't even know what it means. RK says bring back the merch. Maybe I will. All right, so now we're looking for resistance here at the halfback. If new sellers want to take the market lower, they should try to pile on here. They don't want the market to pass back through that opening price. Philip says the scallywag, that would certainly be appropriate. Mark, good morning to you. Coming to us from the UK. Cool Bean says, Quant Tower might be a fail. I have had problems with the charts three days in a row not separating the overnight and regular trading hours. That's interesting. It may have something to do with the time zone. Make sure you're using West Coast times. Okay, once again, testing the resistance. healer unfortunately i have no idea what that says all right passing back through the opening price looking for a gap fill once again so this is indicative of gap and chop as i said if they really wanted to take the market lower right now they should have been able to keep it below the opening price so this tells us we're likely to go sideways in here for a while when they pushed up, they took out 375 stops from a single account. 
Then they came down, took out another 300 from another account, took out another 430 from another account, took out another 330 from another account, took out another 260. So as long as they keep squeezing these larger players who are trying to bet based on which way we're going to break from the gap, they will keep on chopping. I make note of the fact that we have an iceberg down here at 5190, the current low, and a large liquidity node down at 5170. If they do get a gap fill, that increases the odds in my mind. They'll get resistance and come back down for the lows. So I am still bearish as long as we remain below yesterday's low. Malcolm says Golden Hind was a galleon captured by Francis Drake in 1577. So, sorry, I wasn't I wasn't aware. Not up to speed on my uh, my Francis Drake era uh, pirate lingo. He says, what are the dots showing in the book map? So there's two different types of dots you could be talking about. The first are these volume dots, which are these sort of green and red dots that you see right here. That is showing us a large imbalance in volume. If it's green, there's way more buyers than sellers. If it's red, way more sellers than buyers. That is often an area where the market is sweeping through some stops. Just the way I have my settings set up, that's what you're seeing. And if you're talking about the little dots that have a number next to them, that is the stops indicator telling us when a single account has been swept for whatever that number is. Look, they just took out another 474. One account just got squeezed. I don't know who the heck that was, why they didn't just put that, that stop up inside yesterday's range. But anyway, it's a computer. It doesn't necessarily think logically it's going off of some algorithm beep boop beep boop beep boop probably based off of the options market and it put its stop in a ridiculously dumb place one tick below the gap fill and so the market came and it squeezed it said thank you sir may i have another Cool Bean says they blame it on daylight savings. Yeah, that's one annoying thing about Window Trader when you go back to backtest things to do replay. After daylight savings, it's all fucked up. <laughs> so yeah, it does confuse things for the computer. Percy says the NQ gap filled. Oh, it filled a while ago. Are they starting to spend time in yesterday's range? Yes, they are. So that is less bearish to see. Next potential resistance above is around 18 225. I'm going to stay focused on the ES and what happens with the gap fill. Um, Rito says, do you use market by orders data? 
does using these data make sense at all? Or is it great marketing? Um, so what you're seeing over here, this is the liquidity in the current order book. And what you're seeing over here is the volume that traded. That's what I'm watching. Liquidity versus the volume that actually trades. Okay, so the gap is filled. Now we're looking for one of two things to happen. Either the market immediately gets smacked right back down, which would be bearish to see as a gap and go, or we start to spend time and bring in volume inside yesterday's range. If we start to spend time and bring in volume inside yesterday's range, we are no longer bearish. We are neutral. But if we get smacked down, we remain bearish for the gap and go. Let's see what happens. Danny says, what's the name of Morpheus's ship on the Matrix? Yeah, the Nebuchadnezzar. That would be the name. Dude, thank you. Great choice. Tony says, I wish we could see those stops before they fire. Uh, no, that's, <laughs> that's the point of stops. The, uh, the broker keeps them hidden until that moment. But yeah, it sure would be nice. Uh, Tony, they sell them? No, they don't. That's pay for order flow. They can't, they can't uh, send BlackRock your order until it's in the order books. Now, they can send it to BlackRock a fraction of a second before they send it to the NICE, but they, they can't send it until it's in the order book. Okay, we're getting some mixed signals here as the tempo picks up. We have a gap and go, which is bearish to see, but we also have value pushing up against the high of the day, which tells us we might need one more poke into yesterday's range. So I remain bearish, but cautiously so. Okay, the B period low is considered a weak low now because it reversed exactly at the opening price. So again, that is actually bearish to see. I know it doesn't feel that way as the market goes up, but we are leaving things behind that need to be tested. We've now left a weak low at 5,200 that needs to be tested. And we've got an iceberg at 5,191 that wants to be tested. So it is still bearish. But Charles feels like it's going to go up. I know that's the way they do.
Jay says, U.S. wholesale inventories month over month, revenue was 0.5. It was forecasted 0.5. Would you like some fries with your nothing burger? Next news is the FOMC minutes at 2 p.m. I mean, CPI was like a fraction of a point off from what it was supposed to be, too. And the market shit. Yeah, forecast, uh, 3.4, actual 3.5 <laughs> market, fucking 70 points. <laughs> Cracks me up every time. Okay, the B period low remains weak. Okay, there's the repair of the week low. Man, gap and chop continues. So if I'd shorted yesterday's low, I would be going ahead and moving my stop below my entry at this point. Once they dipped back below the opening price, so they worked their way up, they filled the gap, they came back down below the opening price, that should start to create momentum to the downside. And anytime something should happens and it doesn't, that causes me to rethink my trade. So if I was short from yesterday's low, I would be putting my stop just below my entry in case they come back up through it. Because if they come back up through it this time, they will likely continue up into yesterday's range. If the sellers want to remain in control, they need to smack this market down. Right, Chao? Right now. Okay, that's twice now. We passed through the opening price, but did not get new selling. That is less bearish to see.
Okay, so I'm now pointing out three new resistance levels above. They're really close to each other, 14, 17, and 20. If the market gets back up into yesterday's range, it will likely get some short covering. Everyone that's been selling in here will get squeezed. Bop, 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 bop. We get a little short covering. We will be back to neutral, but importantly, we will not be bullish. Not right away. There you go. So now we're back to neutral, which implies uncertainty. Because what could happen is one of two things. Either the market gets some short covering, bop, 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 and then smacked right back down through the open, or it gets some short covering, bop, 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 and then it comes down and gets new buying and continues up higher into yesterday's range. So now we know the gap and go is over, right? They tried to do it and they could not get back below that opening price. So the next question is, do we just take out the sellers or do we get new buying inside yesterday's range? Okay, there's the short covering. Bop, 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 bop. So we got a low volume high and a low volume low. Often that means chop, chop, chop. The market will go. Scooball says choppy, balance area low. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this it's kind of hard to call a balance area here, but this could certainly be it. So this was the previous balance area low over here. But if we're looking at this week's balance, yes, we're on that balance area low, which is slightly higher. further increasing the odds of chop.
Man, there are big players getting squeezed on both sides of this. It's got to be those uh, market maker bots.
Okay, so as we're pushing into resistance, I can't tell you exactly where, but somewhere in here, I expect the sellers to smack the market back down once again. If the market stays up here above uh, 5208 and it spends enough time that it can turn a candle pink up here, I will begin to become a little tiny bit bullish. Still not quite enough to put up the green banner, but... With the ticks getting back above the zero line, there is potential for new buyers to step in here. So far, it is still just short covering. So I am watching the volume profile over here on the left for a pink candle to pop up. Once I see that, I will watch the ticks to see are those buyers or sellers. If we have new buyers, I will become a little bit more bullish. Let's see what happens. You say to me, Charles, I wish these things were more instant. I wish we could just instantly know what's happening. Well, we can't. But we can have clues for what comes next. Right now, the market is still telling me chop. More sideways, more grind. But getting that new volume inside yesterday's range could get me a little bullish. Let's see what happens. Scott says, that's the most stops in a short period I can recall. I agree. Looking at book map, this is an insane amount of stops being taken out. So obviously we know what that is. That's those bots that trade for the market makers that sell options. And they're trying to hedge against whatever options they've sold. But man, they are getting wiped out. I mean, just, just looking at the shorts that have been stopped out. We got 400. 500, 400, 500, 600. I mean, these are huge orders. They keep trying to push the market lower and the market keeps being like, boop, nope, we'll take your stops. And then they try to push it lower and then boop, we'll take your stops. And they try to push it lower and then boop, we'll take your stops. Scooball says this liquidation from the overnight can be retraced in a moment. Um, I need to see that new buying to be convinced. I got to see a candle turn pink up here. Or I assume it's just more short covering. Boop, another 200 stops. And th there's a difference, guys. There's a difference between shorts that are covering and new buyers. Because once shorts cover, that's it. They're out of the market. Whereas new buyers stay in that trade, allowing the market to continue higher. So if this market wants to start to retrace the liquidation from the overnight, they got to have new buyers step in, not just keep taking out shorts. Because every set of shorts they take out is fewer new people to turn into buyers. Increasing the odds of more chop. Cool Bean says, smash the like button or walk the plank. Yeah, we're trying to get 100 likes. We got 144 awesome humans hanging out, but only 68 likes. 
dare I say, are there 32 of you willing to push a button out there in the chat? Push the button. Holton says, smash the like button if you want to see a pink candle. Well, if you see that pink candle, we then got to look at the ticks to see what it is. Is it buyers or sellers? But I do think we're close to getting a pinky here pretty quick. We're about 2,000 contracts away here at 5212. 1,000 contracts away. Ooh, 92 likes, eight people. Seven. Five. Four. Three. Okay, and I get three likes, three likes, three likes from the chat. Three likes from the chat. Anyone with a button that wants to push the like, like three likes from the chat. <laughs> oh, somebody took theirs away. You son of a bitch. All right, so we got a pink candle. That is a sign we have new business happening inside yesterday's range. So let's drop down and see. Oh no, it's sellers. The ticks are below zero line. That means there are more people going short than going long. So that means the chop will continue. A hundred and one likes. Boo, 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 boo. We did it. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Okay, so now as we print the C period, the market kind of has an opportunity to make a move. If they can get the C period above the B period high, they will bring in another wave of short covering. The way getting back into the previous day's range brought in this B period move. If the C period can get above the B, we can get continuation higher. As long as the B period, or sorry, the C period stays below the current high, Below 52.16, the higher probability is more chop sideways. And that is just because the ticks have not been able to stay above the zero line. So they are selling more of the underlying shares. Short covering in the futures, but selling in underlying shares. So we need to see those ticks get above and stay above the zero line or the C period get above the B period, in which case we would get bullish. But for now, we assume more chop. I'm talking about it's choppy inside the previous day's range. Uh, Greg says, what is the indicator on bookmap that shows stops? It is called the stops and icebergs indicator. It is an add-on. You got to pay extra for that. The stops part generally isn't that important. It's the icebergs that are generally more valuable data. 
today is a very funky day with this many stops by large accounts. So the way I have it set up, it only shows me when it's a large account. You know, when there's at least 50 contracts from a single, you know, person being stopped out at once. So seeing this many, you know, large stops is unusual. But as I said, I think it just has to do with the, uh, look at that, another 155. Has to do with the options market. Okay, market creating a poor high. Can the C period break the B period high? There it is. Okay, so now we should expect the market to start trying to retrace some of this move from the overnight. This increases the odds that we are heading up to 52.34, yesterday's volume point of control. We are now watching, instead of watching for resistance, instead of watching for where the sellers step in, we're now watching for support. Where do the buyers defend? We got two levels right on top of each other. We got this node of volume around 52.12 as potential support. And we have the base of the B period single prints of 52.10 as potential support. to monitor for continuation to the upside. They have now spent enough time and brought in enough volume inside yesterday's range that they can start to uh, retrace the move down. I would say at this point, I would only remain bullish as long as the market remains above the halfback at 52.06. If the market sells back down below there, then it would be bearish to see. Look, another thousand stops taken out. <whistles> These machines, they thought they were so smart when they sold off the market in literally less than a minute. And now they're getting punched right in the chin for it. Fighter Pilot says, very little acceptance below the balance area low, asymmetric opportunity. He's, of course, talking about if you are a trader who, <coughs> excuse me, who trades on a longer time frame, we see this as a balance area in here. It's basically just a range where the market goes sideways. If you look below that balance area low, and you fail, you do not bring in new sellers and continue lower, the highest probability is that you will turn around and head back up to the balance area high. Okay, which would be somewhere around the overnight range. I'm sorry, uh, yesterday's closing price. However, you don't have to do it that day, right? So that doesn't mean we're gonna go all the way back up and completely retrace today. So if you're looking for that trade, you may have to sit in it for a few days. This would be an example of a look below and fail that took a couple days 
to get all the way back up to the opposite end. But, um, yep, you could take on very little risk for very large reward. That is asymmetry, my friends. I am very confident, not necessarily that we can make it all the way to the opposite end of balance, but that we can at least make it to 34 today, as long as this momentum continues. As long as the D period low stays above the C period low, and the E period low stays above the um, D, and so on and so forth, I think uh, 34 is in play. I suspect right now Jam Croissant is uh, tweeting his <laughs> fat girl jumping on a, uh, a pool floaty meme. Kubal says stop indicator can show move stops too. I think yes, if they move them before um, they have to like move them before they fully filled all the stops they're going to fill. So like, let's say a large player has an order for like a thousand stops right here. They're going to get stopped out on a thousand contracts. If the market comes up, and it fills, say, like 400 of those, and then it, it moves lower, and they decide to move their stop up, it will show you that they've moved their stop up. But that only happens if they get a partial fill before they move it, which is not as common. Sebastian says, could you elaborate once more on the difference between short covering and new buyers? I don't understand the difference in the effect on price. Okay, so if somebody is short the market and they get stopped out, in that moment, in that second, they are a buyer, right? That's, that's how they get out of a short is by going long. But it doesn't create any pressure to push the market up. So the pressure to push the market up is always based on buyers. If there are more people going long, the market goes up. If there are more people short, the market goes down. Okay. So for the market to keep going up, you have to keep having more buyers to keep pushing the market higher. It's just like an art auction. If the auctioneer says, do I have a thousand dollars? Do I have a thousand dollars? And five hands go up in the air, he'll lift it up to 1100. If four hands go up in the air, he'll lift it up to 1200 and so on and so forth until there's no one left. And that's when the up move ends and the down move starts. Does that make sense? So if the only reason that the market is going up is because shorts are covering, the market will stop going up at some point. That last schmuck who's short, who's waiting to get squeezed, will get squeezed. And then out of nowhere, the market will turn around and start heading lower. So what you're always looking for, particularly in a scenario like this, where you've got a gap fill, 
type of scenario is, do you just get shorts to cover or do you get new buyers going long? Once you know you've new buyers long, in my opinion, the best indicator for that is the ticks. Okay. We saw how hard they had to work to get above the zero line. Oh man, they got smacked down again. How hard they had to work to get above the zero line. That was buyers fighting and fighting and buying and buying and buying to get above that zero line. So that's the new buyers, but you got to wait to see it because there was a very real chance we could have just in the B period, got some short covering, run out of steam and then gone lower. So you wanted to make sure you had those new buyers. Speaking of which, we'll be looking for support right now here at uh, 5217 to see if we get more new buyers. And that's what we're going to do all day, right? As long as we're inside yesterday's range, we're just going to keep looking for new buyers. When the market dips, do they step in? Okay, great. It starts to go higher. We squeeze more shorts and then it dips. Do they step in? Okay, great. Starts to go higher, squeeze more shorts, then it dips. We're just going to keep watching that and see if we keep getting those new buyers. Because if we don't, the auction will stop going up and turn around and start going down. Now, the thing about a balance area, the thing about a look below and fail of the balance area, which this now is, is that it is often very, very tricky. It won't go in a straight line to the opposite end of balance. It will slowly work its way up there all day long, making you think it's going to reverse, think it's going to reverse, think it's going to reverse. So don't pay attention to the sellers. Pay attention to the buyers. Can they hold it? For now, the level they got to hold is 5205. Once we print the D period in 15 minutes, it'll be the C period low. Then when we print the E period, it'll be the D period low and so on and so forth. As long as we keep getting new buyers above those levels, it will keep going up. Okay, first potential support here at 17. Do those buyers step in? Do those ticks bounce? Let's see what happens. Uh, Steven says, C is making single prints. Would you expect those to be filled? They are not single prints yet. Right now, it's just a selling tail. Um, so right now, it's not single prints. It will be when we print the D period, then if there's C's by themselves, those will be single prints. But right now, we're focused on one time framing. We're focused on support. Do they get it? Scooball says, I mean, if it's a trailing stop, the ticks, no volume after the long liquidation. You mean the short covering? And C, short squeeze? Um, no, I now believe we have spent enough time and brought in enough volume inside yesterday's range that there will be buyers waiting to keep this momentum going. Hard to guess where. Let's see what happens. Sometimes after we've had days and days where the market trades in a tight range, large ranges with a lot of volatility freak us out. 
and they make us think, oh, it's going this, it's doing that. The fundamentals remain the same. The buyers took control. Can they remain in control? No matter how big the ranges are, that's what matters. Let's see what's happening with the queue. Same thing. I would say the queue has got to hold 18,157 to continue the momentum. And they literally just pushed exactly into support. So the queue needs to bounce right here, right now. Oh, Scooball saying with a stops indicator. Yeah, yeah. They can be stop. It's just stop orders. So yeah, that can be a, um, a take profit order or getting stopped out of a trade. John Q says the MLB Texas Rangers had a 55% win rate last year, but won the world series. So trying to focus on my rules and not care about my win losses for the day. A hundred percent. Your win losses just tell you how good your rules are working and how good you are at following them. So if you're taking on lots of losses, rethink the rules, make them better. And if you're taking on lots of gains, don't change a thing. Don't get greedy. Don't feel like you're invincible. Just keep following your rules because they're working. This is the way. Mark says the single print below may be a magnet. Could be. Let's see. The ticks will tell the tale. Can they pop back up to the zero line? Or do they get smacked back down? Um, Truman says if price moves up while ticks move down, does that mean all the dips are being bought up? It's the opposite. So if price moves up while ticks move down, it means it's shorts that are covering. Okay, no bounce at 15, so now we are looking to fill that single print. 52.10, that is the next potential support. Those ticks are not looking bullish. Buyers need to defend both markets right now.
Dun dun. Dun dun. Ooh, NQ testing the uh, B period low. If it breaks the B period low, that means the move up is over for the day. Both markets dancing right on a razor's edge. That's the end of the trend for the Q. Shit, tough day. I'm going to give the ES one more chance. If it can stay above 5205. But if it dips below, the momentum is over. As we are now back below yesterday's range. Nope, they can't hold it. Damn, so now we're back to neutral once again. Can't be bullish, can't be bearish just yet. Very tricky, man. Very, very tricky. So what would get me bullish or what would get me bearish once again? If the D period prints... And it gets back above yesterday's high and the ticks are able to get back above the zero line. I will get bullish once again. Okay. Or if the market pushes back below the opening price, 5,200 and the ticks remain below the zero line and we get new selling down there, I'll get bearish once again, but we are back to sort of an unknown choppy place until we print a D period here in about two minutes. Because technically the market is still one time framing higher, but we don't have the buyers. So we got to wait, give the market a little bit of time, probably at least, you know, 30 minutes or so before we get a better idea of what's happening. I still believe in the thesis that I described earlier this morning that today, today before market close, we are either visiting 5234 
or 5181. I still believe that is the case. It just seems to me the market will need to go sideways for a while first before it does. So I am in caution mode here, waiting for more information. Okay, here's the printing of the D.
Okay, so that is cessation of the trend. Not that we needed to see it as a signal, but that tells us that the momentum up is definitely over on the ES. So both markets got cessation. Both markets, ES and NQ, are now below the previous day's low. So the more time and the more volume that they bring in down here, the more bearish it will become. But getting exact entries for a short will be tricky. As I think we're going to chop sideways for a bit. Okay, so now I'm watching the halfback at 52.09 and the note of volume just above it at 52.12 as potential resistance levels. I do not know if we'll get resistance there or not, but if either of those levels hold, that would be bearish to me to see. I just don't know yet as it feels like we might just chop. So let's wait and see. If we do not get resistance at 52.12, if the market pokes back up through there again, I'll assume we're going sideways probably for many hours inside this range. But if the resistance can hold, the sellers can start to push the market lower. Fighter Pilot says developing value is still clearly lower. Very short term traders will sell every rally and cover on dips. Um, yeah, I can I can as long as the ticks remain below the zero line, I can go with that. But if they pop back up again, I think it's just sideways. I think it's just chop.
John Q says, instead of submitting orders, I place them on the chart in advance where I think would be a good buy or sell. Gives me a relief. It makes me more patient. 100%. Almost never, I mean, there are certain moments, but almost never should you just be smashing the market buy or sell. You should always just put orders in at support or resistance. If you are going to smash the buy or sell, it should be because you waited for the market to get to a support or resistance level, watched it, and then hit the button. But you should never hit the button when you just feel like it. Like, oh man, I should get short. Because then you'll often sell the low. Or buy the high. Screwball says, buyers are giving up so fast. This market just stopped a lot of stops at the morning. And now, choppy day at the balance area low. He says, I don't see any reason to be bearish below 5,200. I do. Because getting below 5,200, we are now bringing in new sellers. We're back below yesterday's low. We're bringing in new sellers. That's what it would take to get below the opening price again. And then we also have those two references I referred to earlier. We have an iceberg sitting at the low, an iceberg at 5,190, and that big note of liquidity further below. So we have two magnets tugging on price. Now, right now at this moment, I don't really care about them because we can just go sideways. But if we pass back through the opening price again, first magnet, head towards second magnet. So yes, I would be bearish below 52.
God, this is like watching paint dry. Come on, market, pick a direction. So as I said before, I'll just repeat it once again. It looks like they want to chop us to death here. If they can get below 5,200 and stay below there, I think we're going to get a pullback down through the A period low. As long as we're above it, we're going to get more chop and more sideways grind, likely into the E, even potentially the F period. Okay. But if they can turn the half back at 5,209, which is also the previous day's low, or this node just above at 5212, allowing them to just repair that weak reference and then get sellers. If they can turn either one of those into resistance, which they have not been tested yet, then I will get bearish there as well. In between those two, in between the opening price and um, 5212, it's just going to be more chop. I do think they want to break the market one way or another but it seems like they want to go sideways as long as they can first. So that is my chop zone right there. Patience will be required here today. Can't force anything. Got to wait for new information inside this range. If you have any questions, hit me up in the chat. Uh, Griff says, do I ever take into account the probabilities of breaking the overnight high or the overnight low? Um, not specifically, we do almost always break the overnight high or the overnight low, but I'm on a day like today, I'm more focused on momentum, right? If you go back and rewatch the first five minutes, I said one of two things was going to happen. Either the market was just going to go sideways in a tight range all day long and just rotate and chop, or it's going to break and make a big move one way or another, right? And I pointed out those levels above. The above level is 52.34. The below level is 51.81. So as of this moment right now, that's what I'm focused on, okay? Is which of those two things is happening? Is the market going to chop and just go sideways all day and just rotate around right here at yesterday's low? Or are we going to make a break and move one way or the other? Well, now we know the probability that we're going to make a break for that higher level is basically gone, right? The market had its chance in the C period. They had the momentum, but they couldn't make it happen. So now we don't really think they're going to get to that one. So the question is, are we just going to go sideways all day or are we going to head for that lower level? As of right now, I'm saying this is that range. Inside of here, it's sideways. If we get above this high, uh, sorry, above this node right here at 52.12, it's sideways, okay? But if we can turn the half back or that node into resistance, it's an attempt to go lower. Or if we can get below the opening price and spend some time, it's an attempt to go lower. And we just have to be patient and wait, wait and see what happens. More chop or sellers take control. We should find out shortly. Thank you, Fighter Pilot. Appreciate you as always. Fred says, Charles, patience is the enemy of the zero DTE. Um, well, unless you're a seller of zero DTE. <laughs> and then time is on your side. Uh, Truman says, if price moves down while ticks move up, 
Does that mean buyers are taking profits? Um, price down ticks up. No, that would mean that they're liquidating the futures and they're buying the underlying shares. But what we have right now is just chop. Okay. Across price and ticks, it's just chop. But now we'll find out, do those ticks get smacked down here at the halfback? Do we get new sellers at yesterday's low? Sherman says so much nuance to ticks and price. I have just scratched the surface. Yeah, the ticks are the trickiest one to learn to read because they're it's so nuanced. What I always tell people when they take my Mastery of Markets and Mind workshop is don't look at the ticks. Like I'm staring at them right now because I'm a pro and I know how to look at them. But generally speaking, the best thing to do is cover them up and don't look at them until the very moment you're pushing into a support or resistance level. Only watch them at that moment. Ignore them the rest of the time. If you just watch what happens to the ticks at support or resistance, do they get smacked down from wherever they are at resistance? Do they get pushed up from wherever they are at support? It'll make it much easier to understand. So here's a great example. The market pushed into resistance, but it did not flip right at the halfback, which is where I wanted to see it flip. Instead, it reversed at the D period high. So even though technically the ticks got smacked down, I'm going to ignore them because of how weak that high is. That feels more like a chop move. That feels more like bots to me. So I still see this as a chop zone. And I'm beginning to worry. We're going to do nothing but chop until 2 p.m.
Welcome, Damien. Okay. Moment of truth. Can something finally happen? We either get a reversal right here at the D period low and head right back up for the E period high, or we liquidate and we start to get some pressure lower. If we get a reversal, more chop. If we liquidate, maybe we can finally start to sell off. Let's see what happens. Fausto in the house. Been a minute, Fausto. How are you, brother?
I'm happy to hear that, foes, too. Hi, right back at you. Griff says, right here, right now, seems important. It is. We should be starting to liquidate here. We should be starting to squeeze buyers, but we're not getting it yet. Okay. Well, this is going to be a really shitty way to explain this, but I am bearish. I think we're heading down to test 5191 and we'll be monitoring for continuation lower from there. However, I think it's going to be a very choppy trip. I don't think they're going to go in a straight line. So if you are looking too short, you want to risk the minimum you possibly can. And once you're in a short, you want to move your stop below your entry as soon as you can and monitor for continuation. But this is bearish to see. At least to get to the A period low. And then we find out, do we get a real liquidation down there or not?
I would almost say this is like a chop zone bearish. Yeah. Fausto says, but the bulls might defend it the longer this goes on, delaying that test for a different day. Um, I wouldn't say for a different day. I would say if they're going to just chop sideways, it'll be till 2 p.m. But uh, I just can't imagine what buyer has bought today that wants to defend. Right. I mean, the buyers had a massive move to the upside and they instantly got slapped right in the face. So I could see the market going sideways below the halfback here until 2 p.m. But it does seem the stronger magnet to me now is that A period low. Okay, so the first potential resistance is going to be this B period low. The market works so hard to get down there and break below it. Will the sellers defend? If not, it'll be that node up around uh, 5202.
Boy, this is an exciting market. It's just a thrill. Okay, so I got to take a break to make some foods and chill for a little bit. I've been staring at the chart nonstop since the open. The way I see it now, these sellers are trying to hold this B period low. They are working awfully hard. They keep selling and selling and selling. But so far, they're not getting much for it. So I would basically say the target is testing 5191. But if the market pulls back through the opening price, then it's going to just keep going sideways. It's just going to chop until two. So these sellers, they're holding for now. But will they continue to hold if they keep getting nothing for it? Probably not. So I am now bearish below the opening price. Back to chop if we get above it. And with that, I will have to say goodbye to all of you. As far as what to carry forward, like I said, you know, if the market can get below the A period low, they can start to liquidate just like they did up here earlier with the uh, short covering. Um, but for now, it feels like they're going to go sideways till 2 p.m. Whatever happens after 2 p.m., there can likely be follow through. So if the market pulls back up towards yesterday's low and then 2 p.m. hits and it just goes boop, 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 and then goes nowhere, it's going nowhere till the close. And you're going to stay inside today's range and just rotate. If it starts to pick a direction after those FOMC minutes come out and it starts to move, it will likely get continuation. My further targets, if it can break out of this range, to the upside is 52.34, to the downside is 51.81. But with this slow, slow tempo, it seems like they don't want to go anywhere until 2 p.m. So with that, I will say goodbye. Wish you all the very best. Happy trading. I look forward to seeing the members of the brigade in the live stream tomorrow morning. For anyone else, if you were looking for an edge in your trading, you're looking to understand how to read the two-way auction process. You're looking to understand where the buyers and sellers are and what is likely to happen next. And more importantly than all, you're looking to understand yourself and your psychology and how to make better decisions, manage your emotions, and stay in control no matter what the market does. Basically, other than bore you to death. Um, I encourage you to check out the Mastery of Markets and Minds workshop. There's a link at the top of the chat, marketsandmind.com. We got one coming up a month from now, and I'd love you to be there. Thank you very much, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.